Minister, um, in terms of business, South Africa is coming onto the fall again through another administration, this time the Ramaphosa administration. But you were there. You were there during the Jacob Zuma administration, and we know how that ended. What makes this such a different point of view, and what will make it last? Well, this is the leadership under President Ramaphosa that is earning its stripes. Um, it's made commitment that it wants to engage with business openly on the things that we're concerned about. Um, the phenomenon of state capture, the uh, policy environment, uh, issues around corruption both in, in government and in business, uh, issues around driving the investment agenda and, and, and also dealing with the crisis around jobs. And we have come together and the sense that you have throughout the conversations that we've been having uh, is that um, government is um, uh, is putting its money where its mouth is uh, in terms of the commitments that they are making and we feel that um, this is a journey that we can travel together. So the trust levels mm. have improved phenomenally from where we were last year. Um, you know that the CEO initiative is engaging, business unity, South Africa which represents all of the business uh, formations is engaging. There's an engagement at a small business level, at, a, at agriculture is engaging around practical solutions to deal with the issue of land redistribution and ensuring that there's inclusive participation on the land agenda and how we make sure that people who are recipient and beneficiaries of land redistributions are successful in agriculture. Mm. Um, so it's more than just a political agenda, there's an economic dynamic here of empowerment. Uh, so we want as business to be meaningful partners mm. in this journey because after all we are also committed to en ensuring the success of this country. Dr. Bijani, you wear many hats. You're the president of BUSA, you're also the chairperson of Anglo Gold Ashanti. That's correct. This summit, this job summit precedes an investment summit that's coming later in the month. Yes. Have we cultivated enough for foreign direct investment to come and plow his money here and particularly since you are in the mining space. We've had a lot of underinvestment as a result of policy uncertainty. Are all those things the things of the past? Two critical developments around mining. The first one is that uh, uh, we've had uh, a minister who is open and engaging, who is attentive, who understands the mining industry in detail. I, there's hardly anything I can tell the Minister of Mineral Resources about mining. Every time I tell him about um, uh, a shaft that uh, is facing difficulties. So thank you very much for keeping it longer than uh, we thought it would survive. So he knows very detailed. Well, uh, he understands that, but he's very passionate about uh, ensuring that uh, whatever we do mm. as the industry, we take into account the interests of workers, mm. we take into account the agenda of the country of empowering communities, etc., etc. So our engagement is quite practical. Uh, this is what I, as a minister, want to achieve. Mm -hmm. What do you guys uh, think is possible mm. to do to make sure that I realize my aspirations? It's a very realistic, practical um, a conversation. But he also understands that investors are after ensuring that uh, they get uh, a return for the money that they, they put in, and that we're competing with in investments with other uh, countries. Mm. So two critical things that uh, we have done, uh, one is creating regu regulatory certainty. And that has set a very positive tone in the mining industry. And, and we believe that uh, there's a very good basis to expect and anticipate that there should be more investment in the, in the, in the sector. Mm -hmm. The second one is that um, we are going to engage in a very direct way about where are the practical investment opportunities, mm -hmm. especially in the build-up to the investment conference. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're doing this with regard to other sectors of the economy as well. To have that conversation in the context of having dealt with the regulatory uh, 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 difficulties that were there makes, makes for an improved uh, 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 conversation. I'm not saying that the issues that uh, business was complaining about around the mining charter have all been resolved, but you saw in the statement that the Minerals Council released mm -hmm. We now believe that uh, we've got something that we can work with. We are here namely in the name of jobs. South Africa has an unenviable title of holding such a high and long-running unemployment number. Over two decades, we've been above 20%. We need investment that will grow the economy, and we need the entrepreneurs that will grow the jobs. Yes. 
Firstly, I would like to touch on the issue of retrenchments, which yes. the president is very much trying to curtail. Yes. And we know the mining sector in general is very, very affected. And second of all, what compromises can some of the business constituency that you have under Busa, what are they willing to compromise? Are they also willing to, to stop these retrenchments that have been bandied about? Well, let me tell you that uh, the conversations around retrenchments is a very difficult conversation for business. Um, it's difficult in the sense that uh, nobody wants to get rid of workers who help you build a business and an enterprise. So that parting moment is a very difficult moment. Every business that I talk to speaks to this issue. The, 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 the point is this, that in certain circumstances, and this is why we couldn't get to an agreement on a moratorium on retrenchments, Sometimes retrenchments result in saving of jobs. If you don't retrench, you may result, you may get to a point where actually businesses get bankrupt and everybody in that employ loses jobs. Mm. So uh, the unintended consequences that come with proposals around the moratorium is something that we're cautioning against. But we understand the spirit of where this comes from is that the difficulty with um, unemployment uh, and the challenges that we face as a country, can we agree that retrenchments are truly a last resort? Mm -hmm. And that's what business has committed to, that we'll explore every possibility to save jobs, to avoid retrenchments, and that we'll, we'll use the capacity and resources that are there in, uh, uh, in programs of government, etc., uh, on business rescue, on, uh, on, uh, on, 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 on retrenchment avoidment, avoidance programs. We want to popularize those and get, make sure that businesses understand that there are those, and we hope that government systems would be agile and, and uh, be able to be deployed effectively and quickly to ensure that uh, we work together to avoid that. So, so we have some work to do to make sure that we both work together mm. in order to avoid retrenchments. We, 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 we think that it makes sense that all of us must commit to that, and business is on that, is on that page.